The standard cell potential for an electrochemical cell depends on the specific half reactions occurring in the half cells. It's also a measure of the potential energy difference between the two electrodes. The electrode in each half cell has its own individual potential that we call the standard electrode potential. The overall standard cell potential is the difference between the two standard electrode potentials. Specifically, the standard cell potential is the cathode reduction potential minus the anode reduction potential. Individual standard electrode potentials do not have a specific known value. Rather, their values are relative. What that means is we can define one specific electrode to be a potential of zero, and other electrodes will be higher or lower potential relative to that standard electrode. In most situations, we use the standard hydrogen electrode to serve as the potential with a zero voltage. Other half cells or half reactions will have a more positive or more negative potential relative to the standard hydrogen potential, as shown in table 18.1. When we look at table 18.1, we notice that all the half reactions listed are reduction half reactions. As we look at it, we see that the electrode in any half cell with a greater tendency to undergo reduction is positively charged relative to the standard hydrogen electrode and therefore has a positive standard electrode potential. The electrode in any half cell with a lower tendency to undergo reduction, or in other words, with a greater tendency to undergo oxidation, is negatively charged relative to the standard hydrogen electrode and therefore has a negative standard cell potential. Finally, it's important to reiterate that the standard cell potential is positive for any spontaneous reactions, and the standard cell potential is negative for non-spontaneous reactions. In this problem, we're asked to use the standard electro potentials provided to calculate the standard cell potential for the reaction shown below. In this reaction, we have 3 moles of lead plus 2 ions reacting with 2 moles of chromium metal to produce 3 moles of solid lead and 2 moles of chromium 3 plus ions. The first thing we'll want to do to answer this problem is to look at the overall reaction and to identify what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. In this case, we see that the lead 2 plus ions on the reactant side are becoming lead metal on the product side. That means that the lead ions are gaining electrons, which means the lead ions are reduced. On the other hand, the chromium metal on the reactant side is becoming chromium ions on the product side, which means that the chromium metal are losing electrons. So in other words, the chromium metal is oxidized. The second thing you want to do is to identify what's the cathode and what's the anode. In this situation, we know that the cathode will have reduction and the anode will have oxidation. Since the lead ions and lead metal half reaction is shown as a reduction that means that the lead, lead 2 plus half cell is the cathode. On the other hand, the chromium, chromium ion half cell is undergoing oxidation, so that means the chromium, chromium 3 plus half cell is the anode. Once we know which half cell is the cathode and which half cell is the anode, we can apply the equation for the standard cell potential and that is that the standard cell potential is equal to the reduction potential for the cathode minus the reduction potential for the anode. When we plug in the cathode electrode potential, which for the lead is negative 0.13 volts, and the anode electrode potential, which for chromium is negative 0.73 volts, 
we find that the standard cell potential is positive 0 0.60 volts. Since this standard cell potential is positive, we would know that this reaction, as written, is a spontaneous electrochemical process. Now there's one other important realization to make here. If you look at the balanced equation, we had 3 moles of lead ions and 2 moles of chromium metal on the reactant side, and 3 moles of lead metal and 2 moles of chromium ions on the product side. However, if you look at the calculation for the standard cell potential, we did not take into account any of the coefficients that were in the balanced chemical, chemical equation. So it's important to realize that when you calculate the standard cell potential, the coefficients of the half reactions do not matter. Before we move on to other topics, it's important to remember what we've already learned about voltaic cells. Specifically, we know that voltaic or galvanic electrochemical cells involve spontaneous electrochemical processes. Since they're spontaneous, that means that the standard cell potential will be a positive value. Since we have a positive standard cell potential for voltaic cells, that means that if we know what the two half reactions are, then the half reaction that has the more positive electrode potential will be the cathode, or will be undergoing reduction. And the electrode or half reaction that has the more negative electrode potential will be undergoing oxidation. And that half reaction that's undergoing oxidation will be serving as the anode. This leads us to another interesting use of the electrode potentials in table 18.1. Specifically, we can look at any two half reactions and predict which direction will be the spontaneous direction for the redox reaction involving those two half reactions. We do this because we know that the half reaction that has the more positive electrode potential is going to undergo reduction and the half reaction that has the more negative electrode potential is going to undergo oxidation. Let's look at an example using the iron iron 2 plus and lead lead 2 plus half reactions. The first thing we'll want to do is to identify the electrode potentials for each of the half reactions. In this example from table 18.1 we know that the iron iron 2 plus half reaction has an electrode potential of negative 0.45 volts, and the lead lead 2 plus half reaction has an electrode potential of negative 0.13 volts. Now that we know the electrode potentials for the two half reactions, we have to go back to what we know about spontaneous reactions. We know that the more positive electrode potential is going to undergo reduction, and the more negative electrode potential is going to undergo oxidation. Since the lead lead 2 plus half reaction has the more positive electrode potential, negative 0.13 volts, that means that the lead lead 2 plus half reaction will be in a reduction form. In other words, reduction is gaining electrons. So that means we'll have the lead 2 plus on the reactant side and the lead metal on the product side. For the iron iron 2 plus, since it's more negative, we know that that will be undergoing oxidation, and oxidation is loss of electrons. That means that we'll have the iron metal on the reactant side and the iron ions on the product side. Since both of these half reactions involve a transfer of two electrons, we do not have to worry about balancing and changing the coefficients. Once we do this, our overall redox reaction will be lead 2 plus ions reacting with iron metal to produce lead metal and iron 2 plus ions.